Hello everybody, Brian Tulsa here. What are you doing today? Today, I, uh, with Audrey, are you, we're gonna go see a big blue whale in Catoosa. Now this is not a very f long drive from Tulsa. It's actually really nearby, but you know, I've never actually stopped and uh, seen the big blue whale up close. Uh, this is a fairly well-known attraction on Route 66. Um, it's been there like uh, longer than I've been alive. But for a long uh, time, it was um, abandoned. Uh, the family uh, that uh, owned it uh, after the creator of the blue whale uh, passed away, uh, they didn't keep up with it. Uh, the paint had all peeled off. Uh, the, the pond where it is, you, people used to swim there because the water was clear. It was spring-fed uh, spring water. And, um, but it has become since then like a, a murky swamp, it's super gross. So nobody swims there anymore. Uh, but in the mid nineties, they did restore the blue whale. Uh, so uh, it now it has been restored back to its former glory and we're gonna go see it up close and personal. Uh, after that, um, I th I'm thinking lunch um, in Claremore. Uh, we're gonna go to Ron's Hamburgers in Claremore uh, and then finally, we're going to finish up by uh, going to another uh, Route 66 attraction. And there it is. The big blue whale is in fact a big blue whale. They want you fish in here, but no swimming. Oh, they have a little gift shop. I'll probably stop in and see if uh, see if they have anything to get. But uh, yeah, here we go. Every time the family would take a trip uh, on Route 66, which we did numerous times when I was a kid, uh, we'd always see this thing from the highway. And of course we were always curious about it. Um, but at that time, it was abandoned. Um, and this uh, pond here was super gross, totally nasty. And all the paint had worn off of this thing and it just has, was overgrown and really gross. And I remember Dad uh, said that um, uh, people used to swim uh, in this pond and there was a diving board on it and uh, I think a slide is on is in there too a slide into the water um, but the water just looks so nasty I just couldn't ever imagine people swimming in it but uh, apparently back in like the 1960s and I guess in the 70s too the water was clearer it was safer to swim uh, at that time but um, yeah this is the closest I've ever been to it if you look out in the pond, you can see some remnants of uh, when it was a swimming hole. Looks like there's a little platform out there with uh, a ladder on it and another one. But uh, no swimming allowed now, and honestly, that water is pretty gross. You wouldn't want to. When I was a kid, um, I always assumed that the whale uh, had something to do with the biblical story of Jonah. Do you know the biblical story of Jonah? No. Okay, I'll tell you. In the Bible, there was a guy named Jonah, and he got swallowed up by a whale. All right? And, of course, it's Oklahoma, so, you know, if there's anything that could be interpreted as biblical, it probably was. So I thought this was, like, Jonah's whale here. But, in fact, it has nothing to do with that. Um, it was built because uh, the guy who owned the property... His wife used to collect little miniature whales, and he decided to surprise her by building a great big giant one out of concrete. So it was a gift uh, by the guy to his wife, and that's how this whole thing happened. And then people started showing up and checking the thing out, and then that's how it sort of became a, a roadside attraction. But that didn't originally have anything to do with the Bible, surprisingly. It's got these uh, whale-themed picnic tables. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's 
let's do it. You suppose this is how Jonah felt, going straight into, and this is a toothy whale, it's, it's got teeth. Wow, I never actually thought I'd be inside this thing. I've only ever seen it from the road. And it does have two slides, these slides that go down into the water. There's one on that side and one on that side. Now, Otter, you wanna you wanna go ahead and uh, and slide down there? I think I'm too big, so um, uh, no, no, no. Have, have you seen the water? Uh, it's yeah. uh, it's pretty gross. Well, go up there in just a second. There's also a ladder right here. It goes up, and there's a second floor, and you can look out the the portals because, of course. Every whale has uh, portals that you can look through, right? So, around here it has a couple ladders into the water. Those are blocked off because there's no swimming. And, uh, and there's the tail. And I guess you used to be able to dive off of that tail. And then all the way down into here is the the water, which I guess you used to also be able to jump down into, but uh, that's pretty nasty. Whew. That's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Hot, hot, hot. I, just, I, just, I don't want to get on the platform. I just, I just want to see. I just want to see. All right, there's the top of the tail. And I'm going to get it down because it's really hot up here. Excuse me, Mr. Turtle. The sign says no swimming. The sign says no swimming. You're, you're, you're violating the rules here. Management's gonna come and have to, they're gonna have to kick you out. Okay, let's go up to the second floor. And uh, we're hearing a lot of jets. You hear that? So I, th I think we're in the landing path for Tulsa International Airport. So we're gonna hear a lot of aircraft. Uh, this letter up to the second floor is a little sketchy, but uh, this is it. I'm not going to get all the way up here. It just feels really weird on this ladder. It feels like you're leaning backwards when you're climbing up. But uh, yeah, you can look out the, uh, the portals. Uh, you know, just like in a real whale. Uh, real whales have portals, right? Uh, I do want to point out this thing is it's made of concrete very solid which is why uh, it didn't really decay very much when um, it was uh, not in use uh, it's, it's it's very solid but uh, um, but the, all the paint on the outside had chipped off We've got some commemorative bricks here remember our fallen heroes Lewis family Katusa Arts and Tourism Society the road is calling me and you. I agree with that. Roses are red, whales are blue. Right, there's a nice little hiking trail around here. I guess it goes around this pond. And uh, there she is. That is Route 66 right there in the background. So uh, yeah, you can see it very clearly from the road. There she is. There that is. It's 1,505 miles to Santa Monica, California. On one end and on the other end, 711 miles to Chicago. First one I got was from the LA County Sheriff's Department. Or the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. That and is the awesome. The last one that I got was right above your head, the red and blue one. The red and blue right one. Here from Texas. Lolita, Texas. Uh -huh. That's mm -hmm. awesome. And okay. down right along the coast. So. Along the coast of Texas. Mm -hmm. So that was the last one. That and is amazing. LA was the first one. And LA was the first one. Mm -hmm. 
That is so cool. Yeah. It, it's oh. a fun thing. I like the gift shop almost as much as the as the whale itself. <laughs> uh, this is cool stuff. Uh, the patches on the ceiling, all uh, first responder, uh, police and fire. And he said this was the most recent one from Lolita, Texas. Right. Um, and uh, I have got to get, I've got to get once more this uh, this gusty, this original gusty from uh, Don Woods. And he said this was to the son of yeah. the guy that built the way. Right. That was to Blaine. 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 And that's that's a cool piece of local history. If you're from the area, you know exactly what that is. Uh -huh. And I grew up watching Don Woods um, on TV, and mm -hmm. so of course I, uh, when I spotted that, I, I immediately knew what that was. Not I don't know. Do. Yeah. Um, and uh, once again, that's the uh, the wife of the owner with the gators there, mm -hmm. and that's the uh, the creator of the blue whale with the right. snake. Yeah. Um, After the Tulsa Zoo, that was back to you. And uh, he was the director of the Tulsa Zoo uh, for until uh, for 34 years. 34 years, mm -hmm. and uh, they were both animal lovers. And uh, the blue whale was a gift to his wife. Mm -hmm. 31st that, wedding anniversary present. 31st wedding anniversary present. 34, and he started. 34th. He started it 50 years ago this year. 50 years ago this year. Okay. And he had five boats in two years and he sold it. Uh, two years, you said. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so two years is called, and it's made out of concrete, right? Yeah. So it's it's very solid. It's yeah. very solid, yeah. and and so when it was like uh, in disrepair, uh, I think that's why it didn't really decay that much. I mean, the paint had worn off, but the, yeah. the structure itself is is still quite solid. He, yes, it is. And he had built a platform underneath. It's the only thing we know of that Dylan ever put on the blueprint, uh -huh. and he originally drew it on his dinner napkin. Yeah, uh, and he because people would get hot up in the penny zoo, ask if they could jump in the pond, and uh. then Zata would say, sure. Yeah. And uh, when and she watched him sculpt it, she knew he was doing a well, and then when their 34th wedding anniversary came around, it was hers. And he said, people ask me, why a blue well in Oklahoma? Uh -huh. And uh, everyone in this room here, he said, I have built a blue sperm well. The biggest thing on earth, uh -huh. and you can never actually go do anything bigger or better to jump off of. Yeah, it's hard to go up from the the biggest creature uh -huh. on earth. Uh -huh. Yeah, so and also like top. if that's your thirty fourth wedding anniversary, how do you top that you for thirty five? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really yeah. don't. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. So. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks yeah. for talking to me, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for <laughs> this. So, uh, I'm glad you two stopped. And we are the first to sign the guest book. Today on six seven, we just finished with blue whale, and it's time to go to lunch in Claremore, which is not far from here. Uh, so, Audrey, your honest opinion: What did you think of the blue whale? It was a very good whale. It was a good whale. It's, um, is it, was it the best blue whale you've ever seen? One of the best. Yes. One of the best. You think you you may have seen. Maybe one or two better blue whales. One or two. One or maybe, two. Maybe three. Maybe three. But for me, that was the best blue whale. I, I don't think I've seen any blue whales to top it. Now I don't. I know I haven't. I'm not as well traveled as you. I know because you. You know you've been to Florida and you you swam with dolphins. I haven't done that. So you may have seen a few more blue whales than I have. But uh, but in my experience, that's the best blue whale. We are at the Ron's Burgers in Claremore. You can kind of see the sign there. Um, and the 
Website said they were not open for dine-in, but it looks like they are. So we're gonna try and see if we can dine in here because it's too hot to eat in the car. Um, if they're not open for dine-in, then plan B is to just hit the next attraction and then uh, get some lunch on the way back home. Just hit, hit a drive-in. Is that? Do you approve of that? Yes. Okay. Because she's very opposed to uh, eating in somewhere because of the virus. That's very prudent. That's smart. But I feel that we can do this in a safe way. We're going to try to anyway. Ron's Hamburgers in Chile, established 1975, which uh, coincidentally is the same year I was established, because I was born in 1975. We hope they're open. God bless America. Is, is that corner far enough away from everyone? Okay. All right, there's... All right. Hmm. So, Route, Route 66 in Hollywood memorabilia. And they have new hand sanitizing stations. So they are they are being virus safe. And uh, Audrey, look at that sign that's right behind you. Warning everyone to keep six feet apart. So I think I think we're safe. I think we're safe. You don't want to go back out there, it's hot? Okay. So I guess you'll just have to spend some time with your old man. All right, I got the chili cheeseburger. Of course, that uh, chili goes all over that cheeseburger, so we'll have to use a knife and a fork to eat it. And uh, we got a full order of fries to share because Audrey's not hungry enough for a burger. So um, this is my favorite thing here. I love this. Uh, the chili is excellent and um, just slathering it all over a, a burger I think is the best way to eat it. How was it? It was good. It was good. So, somebody who said she wasn't very hungry ended up eating quite a bit more than expected. So now, moving on to the next location in Claremore. We are at the J.M. Davis Arms and Historical Museum. Uh, Audrey, what do you think is in the J.M. Davis Arms and Historical Museum? History stuff. History stuff. Uh, well, actually, uh, they have arms, as in, like, uh, famous severed arms from history, like uh, Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker and the Winter Soldier, you know, arms. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's, what it's, what, that's what's in there. Let's go see some arms. Before we even get inside the building, right outside here on the highway, right next to Route 66, which is that stretch right there. We have a tank. They have a tank out here. Look at it, it's so big. There's a, a bench if you want to sit next to the tank. This is a US Army M41 Walker Bulldog, light tank. Uh, entered service 1953, so that would be Korean War era. Hey, Audrey. What? Why do you think they have the tank out here? And it's a tank. Yeah. You know why I think they have the tank out here? I think it's their way of saying, tanks for coming. Alright. Let's go see some arms. I'm eager to see all the arms they have in here. This is a big one. Anti-tank rifle. That's a monster. Alright, now this is the first room. 
And this is the the brief video that we're supposed to watch to get us acquainted with uh, J.M. Davis. To sum up uh, J.M. Davis's uh, story and the history of this museum, a guy had a lot of guns and they made a museum out of it. That is not a real gun. That is a Buck Rogers disintegrator pistol from the 1930s. I recognized that picture as soon as I saw it. If they have one of those here, I will flip because that is a really cool piece of toy memorabilia. Apparently J.M. Davis himself is here. Um, he, he wanted to be buried with his guns. And I guess his second wife, Genevieve, uh, is also here. So wow, J.M. Davis himself is among us. If I'm not mistaken, that cutaway uh, machine gun there is used for training. SS Baton CL twenty nine. I guess I can also point out that uh, we are looking, these uh, taxidermied heads are looking down upon us. It's, it looks like gold leaf engraving. Yeah, gold inlay, 38 caliber from Spain. That's cool. Check that out. Uh, I believe that's the gun that Joe Colton gave to Roadblock at the end of G.I. Joe Retaliation. You know what these remind me of? These remind me of Back to the Future Part 3 when uh, when uh, Mad Dog Tannen had the tiny pistol that he was going to shoot Doc Brown with. And it looked kind of like that one, I think. Or, I don't know, one of those. What is that? That is a... Mounted Anaconda Snakeskin 20...
uh, looking for his buddy, Rocky. This whole row here is uh, Claremore history. pistol for 45 uh, found by a ballistician Merle A. Gill under a mattress in the Red Crown tourist cabin famous Bonnie from Bonnie and Clyde pretty boy Floyd Got a little miniature train set in here. It's not running. Oh wait, uh, push, let's see. On a timer push button once to start, okay. It uh, didn't start. Uh, nope, 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 nothing. Somebody did leave their Altoids here though. There it is, right there. There. Buck Rogers. Disintegrator. That was a, a toy gun that uh, kids would get and play with in the 1930s. Retail price, 50 cents. It's quite a lot more to purchase one nowadays. Um, I've seen one of these before and uh, it's, it's really cool. Um, even though I don't really get like Buck Rogers um, memorabilia, this is one, if I could find one that wasn't ridiculously expensive, I would get one of those. That's just a really cool piece of history. And there's also this smaller Buck Rogers pop gun. Um, I think it's about the same era, but uh, these are both made of metal. That's not plastic. Those are metal guns. Wow, they even have Carrie Underwood's water gun. Uh, little toy guns, Carrie Underwood. That's, um, you know, I'm glad we didn't miss that. That's worth the price of admission alone. Mm. When I say the price of admission, it's a free museum. This museum is so horny. There we go. Japanese swords. Yeah. That's cool. 
<laughs> Thanks for coming. All right, that's the end of our Route 66 journey for today. Uh, Audrey, what did you think of the J.M. Davis Arms and Historical Museum? It had guns. Guns. It had a lot of guns. Not so many severed arms. I don't think that I saw any severed arms, uh, but lots of guns. Uh, the museum is free. They do ask for a donation if you can. Uh, and we did pick up a few souvenirs. I do like to give a little bit of money to these places because they need that to you know stay in operation but that's it we are done for today we're gonna head back home uh thanks for watching and i will see you tomorrow